Suppose we have a function f of x. Let it be any abstract function represented by this curve. So if we have to measure the value of f of x for different values of x, we need to do it individually for x1 and x2 using classical computation. But what if we can measure f of x for different values of x simultaneously? This in a nutshell is quantum parallelism. The concept of quantum parallelism allows quantum computers to evaluate a function f of x for many different values of x simultaneously. In this video, we will see how quantum parallelism works and some of its limitations. Let us consider a function f of x with 1 bit domain and 1 bit range. Now we will define a transformation given by the mapping xy using this transformation gives us x y xor f of x. This transformation uff is realized using this diagram. Here uff is called oracle gate and is given by this unitary matrix. Now let's see a quantum circuit for evaluating f of 0 and f of 1 simultaneously with the help of this transformation. So this diagram represents the uf transformation where we took x equal to 0 plus 1 by root 2 which is the result of Hadamard operation on 0 state and y as simply 0 state. One thing to note is that if our y is equal to 0 then y xor f of x will be equal to f of x. This can be understood using the xor gate as we can see from this truth table for all values of y the output is the function f of x and similarly if y is equal to 1 then y xor f of x will be equal to f of x complement or since f of x is in the 1 bit domain 0 1 we can write f of x complement as equal to 1 minus f of x that is for f of x equal to 0 1 minus 0 will be 1 so for f of x 0 f of x complement will be 1 and similarly for f of x 1 f of x complement will be 0 so now let's see the operation of uf transformation on x and y so as we know the first entry that is the data register gives the output same and the second entry which is called as the target register gives the output as y xor f of x and since our value of y is 0 the output would be simply f of x and this two qubits are the tensor product for our final state psi so psi can be written as 0 plus 1 by root 2 tensor product f of x so if our x ka value is 0 then f of x would be f of 0 which is tensor product with a 0 state similarly if our x ka value is 1 then f of x would be f of 1 which is tensor product with the state 1 divided by root 2 this is the state psi now in the state psi the different terms contains information about both f of 0 and f of 1 it is almost as if we have evaluated f of x for two values of x simultaneously this procedure can be generalized for n qubits using n Hadamard gate which is called Hadamard transform or Walsh Hadamard transform and it is given as h tensor product n the result of performing the h transform on n qubits of zero state is given as 1 by root 2 raised to n summation x x state so for example for n equal to 2 our Hadamard transform would be h tensor product 2 on the state 0 which can be written as 0 plus 1 by root 2 into 0 plus 1 by root 2 which would be equal to 0 0 plus 0 1 plus 1 0 plus 1 1 by root 2 root 2 would be 2 this same result can be evaluated using this general equation that is for n equal to 2 all the possible values of x are 0 0 0 1 1 0 and 1 1 since x is 0 1 and so putting all this value of x in this equation and putting the value of n equal to 2 we will get 1 by 2 summing over all these values of x which would eventually give us this final result also quantum parallel evaluation of a function with n bit input x and 1 bit output f of x can be performed by preparing n plus 1 qubit state of 0 that is 0 state tensor product n into 0 will give us n plus 1 qubit state and operating the first n qubits with the 
Hadamard gates given by this transform which would result in this general output and this when further operated with the last qubit state of n plus 1 qubit state 0 using our oracle gate will give us the final result of quantum parallel evaluation. Now what are the limitations for quantum parallelism? In our single qubit example, measurement of a state gives us only 0 f of 0 or 1 f of 1 and for the general case measurement of the state summation x f of x would give f of x for a single value of x which is easily achieved by a classical computer which implies quantum parallelism is not that useful. So in the next video we will see how with the help of Deutsch algorithm we can extract information about more than one value of f of x.